Hey, hello everybody, how's it going? It's boopy time. Time for something. Boopy, wow, 12 months. A whole year. A whole year. I've been a, that means I've been a YouTube partner for a whole year. <laughs> Hi, fish boy. Hi, Cadence. Hi, Aaron. What's up? Whole year. All right, let me start the vertical stream now. Hi, Julia. Julia, Julia. Uh -uh. You know what I saw, Julia? I saw that Adashi hit 10,000 subs. Uh-oh, they're going to add. Guys get an ad. Dang them ads. All right. <laughs> Just, uh, okay. But thank you so much, South. Wow. Okay, so this is a spoopy game called Growing My Grandpa. Hey, Gordon Ramsay. Where's the lamb sauce? <laughs> he hit it at midnight, huh? Um, so... When I play these kind of games, I don't like to watch other people's playthroughs and whatnot because I want to go into it not knowing anything. I don't want to know. I want to go in completely unfazed. So, uh, I don't know. So, obviously, I don't know a lot about the game. <laughs> Supposed to be an hour and a half playthrough. If you've seen it before, then uh, don't give me any uh, spoilers unless I specifically ask for them. Uh, hi, uh, Kazu Smug. I hope I pronounced that right. Hey, I'm about to start a game called. Wow, fifty dollars! Wow, Aaron, thank you so much. Whoa, did you meet? Did you mean to do 50? <laughs> wow, thank you. I think that's the biggest one I've ever that's the biggest one I've ever got on uh YouTube. That's the biggest one. Aaron's one of my new viewers. <laughs> All right, uh, let's, let me get the game start. Let me move over. Let me get myself out of the way. Uh, uh, so I'm streaming. I got two streams going. Uh, one is on the mobile version and one is the desktop version. Wow, another one. Hey, Two Crow, thank you so much. Two Crow and South have both hit... Both of you have hit one year. <laughs> Probably, Chase. Aaron, are you in the chat? Thank you so much, Aaron. I don't see... Does anybody... I don't see Aaron talking. Aaron, thank you so much. Oh, there's Aaron. I see, okay, I see Aaron in the chat up above. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron. If there's anything you want to see me stream, let me know and I will arrange it. <laughs> All right, let's get... But th you just set a new record, Aaron. That's the most I've gotten on YouTube. Uh, there's a tutorial for this. I guess I'll take the tutorial.
Thank you so much. Yeah, if there's a game or something you want me to stream, let me know. Hi, Broly. Your name, your name is a mix of Kazuma and Smug. As the character makes funny smug faces. Hi, Atif. All right, let's uh, read this tutorial thing. This game is designed to be played with a mouse. The input required of you is based around clicking the mouse button. The right mouse button will change the cursor image and function only when pointing indicated by the extended index finger can you the player interact with certain menu buttons and prompts please click below in the pointing mode to continue the second cursor mode is indicated by the cursor's image featuring a hand extending all fingers this mode Concerns interacting with objects inside the world, mainly picking up an object and moving it to another position. To continue, please pick up the piece of trash on the right and place it in the trash can on the left. Remember, the right mouse button will change the cursor's mode, but when holding something, the mode cannot be changed until the cursor is not holding something. Continue. Yeah, that's it. In order to expedite the cleaning process, you can use digits 1, 2, and 3 on your keyboard's number row at the top of the keyboard to re reposition the trash can below. Try moving the can to the right of the screen. 3 on your keyboard in order to continue. All right. Uh, you can watch the, the both. They're both going, Broly. I have a mobile version of the stream and a desktop version of the stream. Stream. If you don't like the mobile version, just go over to the other uh, stream, Broly. Oh, you've seen it. Well, okay, don't spoil it. The last year update comes in June sometime. Well, I think it's going to be their last chance. If they if they blow this, they're probably that's the end of that <laughs> of last year. You can't get it to work. Well. Uh, do, do you have a PC or something? All right. Uh, let's read this. Um, I clicked it, the button. A variety of video options can be changed at any time through the use of F3, F4. Yeah, let's get rid of that wiggly. I don't know about you. That wiggly thing is weird. Hi, Alma. What will I do for 2K? I don't know. We'll have to think of something. Uh, you know, if you have a Switch or a PC or something, Aaron, or some other device maybe we can play. Um, okay. Display resolutions. Oh, that's, okay, that's uh, full screen. Okay, I like I like that full screen, but I got to get my uh, OBS out of the way. What are you up to, Alma? Alma. I am a VTuber, Alma. Okay. What does F five What does F five do? Oh, it just changes the cursor. That's it? Okay. Okay, continue. Hovering over the smallest question mark in the top right provides an overlay related to available configuration options. Try to... Okay. Thus ends the tutorial. <laughs> you want a giveaway, fish boy? Week one... I, I excuse Adrian during music class today and spoke with her about her recent string of demerits. It was our first time meeting outside of our quarterly evaluations, and I believe it went well. I can certainly understand Mrs. Richardson's classroom observations concerning 
Adrian's emo emotional state. Oh, so... Wow! 50? Wow! 50? You gifted 50 to Crow? Wow! Today is... Wow, today has been an amazing day. Aaron with the $50 donation, and then Two Crow with the 50 gift subs. And then uh, Aaron and Two Crow both hit one year. <laughs> one year as members. Um, You know, at the moment, my favorite character in DVD is uh, Trickster. And thank you so thank you so much too, Crow. I appreciate that. Wow. <laughs> Adashi was in there. Adashi got a uh, gift sub. Wow. That is a lot of gift subs. Thank you so much. For those of you on the mobile stream that don't know what's going on, uh on the other stream, uh Two Crow just gave away 50 gift, gift memberships. 50 of them. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to clip this stuff. And Aaron gave me a $50 donation. Wow. They love me. They love me. <laughs> they love me, fish boy. Okay, on the um, I can certainly understand Mrs. Richardson's classroom observation concerning Adrian's emotional state. <laughs> you like that emote, fish boy? She was, of course, intensely shy when we first met. As I understand it, she is similarly withdrawn in her classroom activities and only speaks or acts when she absolutely must. Some things she simply will not do. Instead of participating in a mandatory group activities, she will sit alone and accept that she will receive a demerit. I'm ground. Why am I grounded? What did I do, Broly? If you don't like the mobile stream, Broly, you should jump over on the other stream. If you don't like the mobile version. Yeah, a whole year or two, Crow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, if you want me to do some customs, Aaron, I will do I will do customs for you. I will do custom specific I will do custom matches specifically for you, Aaron. Mm. <laughs> All right. Before the meeting, I read Mrs. Richardson's parent-teacher report, which allowed me to estimate some about Adrian's home life. The parents are well-educated and come from a prestigious background, but they like, lack time to properly nurture Adrian. She is often alone, and when she is not, the parents seem to not understand the importance of warmth and affirmation when dealing with someone so young. Because I, I'm grounded for eating the pizza? You, you set, I mean, two, we got two records set tonight. Two records. Aaron set the record for the biggest donation I've received on YouTube. And Two Crow set a record for the most gift memberships I've received on YouTube. I'm going to end up doing custom matches uh, for Aaron in DVD. Having two parents of this reserved and icy temperament exacts an inhibition in a child. The child's imagination is subdued, but only ostensibly, for it eventually finds its way into regular life. I surmised that I would be able to reach out to Adrian by way of make-believe. I guess that's Adrian there. How are you liking your new house? You've told me you used to live close by. But it still can be a big adjustment. A new room, a new school. The the basement. I like that. The basement? Yeah, well, there's a lot of cool stuff. 
Mom and Dad sent me down there. Your mom and dad made you go? Yeah, but there's a lot of cool stuff. Well, that's not why they sent me down there, though. Why did they send you down there? But fighting, they were fighting and shouting. I came in to help, and they shouted at me. They said, go clean up downstairs. So I went. That sounds tough. Do they fight a lot? Uh, hi, Tiger626. Welcome to the channel. How you doing? <laughs> no, you must live, Broly. You're the legendary Super Saiyan. Uh, I'll have to schedule it, uh, Fish Boy. Uh, we're doing this spoopy game tonight. No, well, the, uh... It's all right, Adrian. Maybe you can tell me more about the basement instead. Okay. Well, it was weird at first. The stuff down there. But cool. I found something living. Sort of. That's very interesting, Adrian. Please tell me more. By indulging her in her fantasies and stories, I was able to glean more of an understanding of Adrian's anxiety surrounding her home and parents. The symbol of Adrian's story seemed to carry their own traumatic weight, and her exploration of the basement may very well be a vehicle for the conveyance of her anxiety. You don't like spooky games, Tiger? Well, you can always come by it back when I'm doing something different. Yeah, we can try it tomorrow if you want, Aaron. Sure. We'll give it a go. No problem, fish boy. It's okay. Whatever might come of our next meeting, whether she will engage in similar make-believe, I will set down her story here. Adrian's story begins with her delving into the basement with a trash receptacle and the goal of cleaning up. Okay, Aaron, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. She discovered one of the walls was covered in plastic bags. She went to investigate, intent on tearing away whatever they covered. Trash bags. What is that? We're putting the stuff in the trash can. Upon removing the plastic trash bags from the wall, she noticed their interior lining was covered in glass. Black. Oh yeah, this does, yeah. This, this visual style does look like shotgun roulette. Okay, Broly, have a good day. Uh, thanks for dropping in. It does look like shotgun roulette. There was, in, the interior lining was covered in glass. Like a window, I offered. No, she said, like a mirror. Reflecting inwards towards the animal they covered. An animal? Yeah. It's the title, the title of the game. <laughs> the title of the stream is the game. Yeah, Buckshot Roulette. It does look like Buckshot Roulette. There's an animal in here. Hi, Panic. Reflecting inward towards the animal they covered. Animal. I gently asked her what exactly this animal was. Here's where the material reality of the story took a turn for the explicitly fantastic and imaginary. What the hell is that? Uh, <laughs> upon her discovery of it, 
At her gaze, it grew or extended its shaggy-haired self. Hair like the fur of a dog, I offer. No, she said. Not the fur of a dog, nor the hair on her head. It grew outwards towards her, the animal's hair reaching out. It was hard, standing almost straight, like the hair on a brush. A bristle, I offer. Yes, she said. He was very afraid at first, but then very curious. I asked her what else was in the room. More things hidden away, she said. Things of Grandpa's as well. First she found a hidden passage under the stairs. Inside were strange dolls, magic objects, naked, naked faceless figures. I heard these cryptic utterances and merely nodded. In order to keep the game of make-believe going, I only pressed for details where I thought necessary. The faceless dolls could be a simple metaphor for the anatomy she feels in her own home. The hidden passage, I am sure, unsure of what to make of that. The revealing of the concealed seems to be thematic in her fantasy. The door under the stairs is but one example. Let's see what else is in this basement. Yeah, yeah, you like the ambient music? I don't see anything over here. The darkness of the shadowy corner unnerves you. You cannot explore here without some form of light. All right, we can't go over there. Nothing to grab. How about over here? A trash pile? I can't do anything with the trash. The new uh, last year comes out in June? What's this? Oh, the secret room. Right? something. There we go. Once she removed the panel and found the magical hidden passage, she was very specific about what she took. Oh, awesome, Aaron. Cool. Cool. Good news. Good news. All right. That means you get to play custom matches with us. Uh, this game, I'm playing it on desktop. Um, but I do have a mobile, whoop, a mobile, uh, stream going. Um, I think I need to, let me adjust a, uh, mobile stream right quick. It looks too hard to see. Let me, uh. Yeah, it, oh, when I went full screen, it messed up the, uh. When I went full screen, it messed the th the stuff up on the uh, on the uh, vertical on the mobile stream. Oops. So uh, let me just fix it on the mobile stream right quick. There we go. That should be that should be better. I didn't re realize the mobile stream looked so messed up. It got messed up when I switched to uh Alright. 
That should be better. Now I understand what that guy was saying that dropped by the mo mobile side earlier. Okay. Back to the game. Uh no, it's a single it's a single player game. Congrats, Aaron. Once she removed the paddle and found the magical hidden passage, she was very specific about what she took. She found a magic book, a magic doll, a photo of her late grandpa, and magic glue. There's a lot of magic in here. Why is there so much magic? Mm, magic stuff. A slouching doll. Its material is rough and coarse. The magic glue. We've got magic glue. We've got magic glue. Ooh. Like a, we found like a spell book. A photo of your late grandfather. <laughs> he looks like Charles Branson. Adrian's grandpa is Charles Branson. Oh, there was a read. Oh, I didn't read it. Papers crude, crudely bound together to form a book. <laughs> it reminds you of Minecraft. Eurasian steep shamanism and fusiform gyrus. An interdisciplinary study in sympathetic magic. A dissertation by Jacob Hart. The impetus of this research was a recognition of a particular pattern in the fragments of documents relating to magic and magico religious practices. Numerous sources were drawn from. Commentaries on laws relating to the banning of sorcery and necromancy. Compilations of folk charms relating to love spells. Hagiographs of saints and their encounters with devils. The list spans many centuries and a great distance. From the Levant to the Khazar. Khaganate to the border of the modern nation states of Russia and Kazakhstan. From this paper trail rose a consistent account about a certain form of magic relating to the binding of demons to a sorcerer's will. A demon called the Heaven of Needles, or the Angel of Needles, was known to be kept best by shamanic keepers or wards who suffer from face blindness, whether by birth or through developmental causes like a stroke or head injury. It was known to be extremely effective, but terribly dangerous, so much so that it became outlawed several times and was generally a popular scapegoat relating to unexpected death. This nexus of magical religious meaning-making sorcery regarding human-related desires and a history and science of neurological disorders related to the fusiform gyrus is where the subject of this dis dissertation will reside. All right, that's a lot of reading. I'm gonna uh, just kind of uh, skim over this. A lot of reading. Um, traditions have been passed down for generations. Oh, I guess that was the end of it. <laughs> okay. I interrupted to ask what she did with these magical, mysterious materials. Grow, Grandpa, she explained plainly, and then, without missing a beat, she continued on with her story. Feeling this was a potent symbol, I stopped her again to ask what she meant. Somewhat puzzled, I did not understand immediately, she explained slowly. Grandpa lives in the cage in the other room, the cage behind the door. 
They grew people in the cage. What? She's growing a monster in a cage. Yeah. Next TCM stream? I don't know. I watched Eastad try to play TCM recently and he had a really hard time getting a match. See anything else in there? A hastily written note. I have repeatedly called your homes to no avail, and so I am forced to leave this here for you all. I found William sitting in the corner of the enclosure area, seemingly severely concussed. Whiskers was gone, in none of his usual hiding places. I immediately su suspected the worst. The project thus must be suspended for now. I am leaving up the usual mirrored coverings we use to keep the anthropoidic void sealed. I have done my best to lock up everything on such short notice. It is a hasty fix, but it will require some time to find a more permanent remedy. I am honestly hoping you do not find this note as I intend to lock the house down too. I intend to race off to you to retrieve the lockbox keys. Do not worry about William's key. It and the rest of his equipment is almost certainly deep within whiskers now. I pray you do not enter this room. No matter how it may appear, William cannot be helped and is only being kept alive as a means of continuing predation on the rest of us. What the hell is this whiskers? What the hell is whiskers? I will say once again, no matter what state you may encounter William in, he cannot be helped. I have sympathy for the young man. I truly do, but I found on his person several photos of his late sister, which would imply certain risks he knew he was taking. Our extant research materials have now become possible liabilities, either criminal or professional in nature, so I have stashed them away. I believe I let you all know how I might do this if we were ever to experience an event such as this. I hope you all remember what I told you. So long then, Dr. H. Who the hell's Dr. H? Uh, the, the, the objective is to grow Grandpa. <laughs> uh, I get the, So I get the impression that there was some kind of cult or something. That uh, was making monsters. And so now this girl uh, moved into this house with her family. And now she's down in the basement. And it seems like she's going to grow a monster herself. That's the that's what I'm understanding so far. Uh, introverted girl spends lots of time in basement and makes a monster. That's the impression I get. <laughs> killer clowns from outer space that's gonna depend on uh the price for me depending on the price uh i'll buy it a note on the experiment one out of four i want to read i want to read the first one the sample's exposure to some of our neural activity is unavoidable. However, the speed at which its desirous yield is produced can be dampened by several precautions regarding lib libidinal... I don't know how to pronounce this word. Libidinal and emotional urges. Keep conversation not related to lab work to a minimum. If you begin to suspect you are developing attachments to your co colleagues, can... Contact me as soon as possible. Ritual behavior with the sample. Trading, bargaining. 
will result in dismissal from the project. The precise mechanism of the exchange of symbols and gifts are required for requested. Desirous yield is not known, and even then, anecdotal accounts of success are ineligible. There's a part that can't be read. End in violent death. Regarding growth cycles, every time Whiskers regenerates and leaves dormancy, it is to be logged as a new propagation. The sample's bodily existence cannot be ineligible, i.e. a part cannot be cut from the whole, so there can only be one living propagation. Propagations are to be terminated after five weeks. Uh, so evidently we're not supposed to let this thing... Uh, they're saying you're not supposed to let whiskers grow for more than five weeks. So this is almost like a um, Gremlins. You ever see that movie Gremlins? Like, don't feed it after night and all that crap. Like, there's a bunch of rules you're supposed to follow or things go bad. Any further development puts us at risk. Termination procedures will be posted and followed with extreme care. With all of that out of the way, I want to welcome you to the project. I look forward to working with you, Dr. Hart. Alright, so... So this is Whiskers. So this thing will grow and, and uh, evolve... And you're supposed to kill it uh, at five weeks. You cannot let it, you're not supposed to let it go past five weeks. So how much you want to bet this little girl is going to let it go past five weeks? Hmm? She's going to, she's going to break the rules and bad, I bet you bad stuff happens. Yeah, kind of like Ouroboros. And then all hell's going to break loose, right? Beyond the door in the room, the cage was hidden, concealed in another cloak of inward-facing mirrors. A hidden cage lined with mirrors. It is strange, almost poetic. The elaborate fantasy of self-reflection, -re concealment, and... Captivity. Hmm. At the cage, she finally cast her spell. But it was confusing, she confided at first. She took the magic doll, the magic glue, and the photo of her grandpa, and she combined them, and she wished very hard. I can only assume in this fantasy that n that next her wish would come true. And what child story would it not? We need glue. Grandpa and a doll, and we glue it together. That looks exactly like Grandpa. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. How you doing? Hi, Utopia. You would name him Gerald. You, if you grew a Grandpa, you would name him Gerald. <laughs> Hi, Venus. How you doing? She put Grandpa in the cage, assuming that was part of the ritual. He was not clear on how it worked. We're doing strange magic stuff, Venus. In a scary basement. You're not doing good. I'm sorry to hear that. Ryan, Ryan. Good to see you again. We're playing a spoopy game, Ryan. 
Oh, it's 3 a.m.? Okay, it's it's just good just seeing you here, you know? Nice to see you drop by. What precise instructions could she glean from her grandfather's magic book was complicated by her reading comprehension? She wished with all her heart. And then she told me she waited a while for something, anything to happen. And after that time, she began to cry. Aha. Uh -huh. I did become a millionaire. That's right. Ducro and Aaron uh, made me a millionaire. <laughs> mm. I, cr I cried really hard, she said. I wanted Grandpa to be back. I wanted my parents to stop being so mean. And it heard me. It heard me wish for Grandpa to come back for my parents to be different. I could feel it through the walls. And it felt me through the air. I asked her what exactly she meant. She could only repeat what she said. By this time, lunch was almost over. I said goodbye to Adrian, and she left to rejoin her class. I was left to consider our conversation. I believe the storytelling strategy I have employed was not unfruitful, but I must probe deeper if I can. Although I can be sure of nothing, I interpret. The impressions I get may begin to help me get an idea of the right questions to ask. Knowledge you acquired this week has given you access to certain topics or keywords you can discuss with Grandpa. I've gained the conversation topic wish. Consider discussing this when Grandpa emerges. Fourth month of deployment, and only five left after that. So will you be at home for Christmas, Ryan? Poor Venus, I'm sorry to hear you're not doing good. I, I hope things go better for you, Venus. You have also gained the following keyword. Shell. You've gained the conversation topic, Shell. Okay. It's week two. Remember, after five weeks, uh, the... I don't know what this thing we're making is, a homunculi? That's what it seems to me. It's, we're making some kind of homunculi. Well, that's cool. I hope you, I hope you get home by Christmas. I met again with Adrian in order to address her emotional outburst in the past few weeks. It is our second time meeting, and while it is standard practice to have multiple sessions with a troubled student, as I assemble a report for the counseling department, I could not help but think, as we sat down in my office, that Adrian already seemed to show a remarkable change in self-esteem and confidence, and per her, perhaps my and Mrs. Richardson's estimation of her as emotionally disturbed was erroneous. The paralyzing shyness and withdrawn attitude Adrian possessed last week was not entirely diminished, but she seemed to hold herself differently this week. However, this only lasted as long as our conversation pertained to initial introductory pleasantries. When I began once again asking about her parents, her feelings regarding her new school and her new home, she quickly lost what new confidence she had gathered up and withdrew again into herself. So once again, I partook in some collaborative make-believe, but this time I was aided by the fact that I had managed to do some research into Adrian's grandfather and I had some insight into what she might actually be finding in the basement. Now this may be overstepping my bounds aim as a school counseling caseworker, but this was all in the service of making Adrian comfortable and happy in this learning environment. In any case, I was able to dig up information regarding the grandfather by inquiring at the univers university in town. Not that I make it a habit of sleuthing, but I had a suspicion the grandfather was a professor there, or at least some sort of researcher. 
due to the fact that the newly constructed laboratory on the campus I drive by every day bears his name in memorial. <laughs> I, we miss you too, Ryan. I hope you're doing great. I hope your deployment is smooth as glass. And then we want to see you home for Christmas. <laughs> the Bubba Who Stole Christmas. I'm going to have to have a special, a very special Bubba Who Stole Christmas this year. He was some sort of anthropo anthropologist or linguist or neuroscientist. That's what? That's a rather, <laughs> that's like completely different things. I did not have to dig that deep before the scope of his work became dizzying and I ran up against the limits of my undergraduate education. But back to the make-believe. Okay, I look forward to he hearing from you, Ryan. What is your grandpa like? Is he a smart man? Not anymore. But I'm teaching him. So he's grown a good deal then. You have been feeding him well. Yeah, he's getting bigger. But he has a lot of room in his cage. He's still behind the bars? Yeah, well, he might be able to climb out eventually. There's this vent in the ceiling. Well, perhaps if he climbs out, I could meet him someday. Oh man, I don't think this teacher knows what she's saying. He's practically asking to get killed by a monster. He, yeah, maybe, but he's not ready to leave. He, he can't take care of himself. I, I have to pee, feed him, pick up after him. Ah, uh, you store the food in your lunchbox. That's nice of you to share. He, he can almost talk. You cannot speak with him. He doesn't, he doesn't have a mouth, sort of, but how do you feed him? He has a mouth on the outside, on his shell, or the stuff that is his skin. I'm a little confused, maybe you can go through a typical day with your grandpa. Okay. Uh -huh. You got a sub! <laughs> well, well, grats! <laughs> you probably stopped by the channel at some point. Uh, one of my, uh, viewers gave away, uh, 50 gift subs. And it may be, it may be that, uh, all of the, uh, subscribe people already have a membership. I, that's what I'm gonna assume, is that maybe all the, uh, subs already have a membership because he gave away so many, or whatever. That's the only thing I can think of, but congrats on the gift sub. I mean, gift member. I, I see. I'm used to, <laughs> I'm used to Twitch and whatnot. Gift membership. I get, I'm get my terminology all wrong. <laughs> I asked her to explain how exactly she goes about growing her grandpa, and Adrian began another tale. Maybe you're just lucky. Maybe you're special. Maybe you're just special. According to Adrian, in the week that had passed, much had changed in the basement. What's this? A vent? The hairy thing that was here before is gone. Oh yeah, there was a thing here. A blob or whatever. I'm guessing it's in the cage. You should visit Grandpa first, okay. Wake. We're gonna wake up Grandpa, everybody. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck to you, also. It was scary at first, she said, the way he moved, the way the doll's skin covered him. 
I wanted to interject. This somehow seemed inappropriate, but I kept listening. Hi, Jake. How's Mo doing? You're, you're on DVD? Say hi to Mo for me. When I look at him, she continued, when I think about him, he grows and moves. It's like he is growing for me. So he's growing bigger now, I asked. Yes, she said, bigger every day. Look, it's Grandpa! Hi, Grandpa. Wow, you're doing great. Look how, look how good Grandpa's doing. This begins the actual growing part of growing your grandpa. Beneath the doll's burlap skin, the follicles knit together what resembles a proper person, your grandpa. You are in charge of its cognitive development and diet until it is able to sustain itself. Currently, you are observing grandpa. Please click the arrow back button below for a brief tutorial of your duties as caretaker. We gotta figure, we gotta learn how to feed Grandpa. Uh, I'll be playing Dead by Daylight tomorrow, uh, Blake. Today we're playing a spoopy game called Growing Your Grandpa. I think we're creating hum a homocula. Here we can see a variety of objects regarding Growing Your Grandpa. Highlighted in red are objectives related to feeding and teaching Grandpa. Important messages regarding Grandpa's recent activity will also appear here. You will need to find it food and learning material before you can move on to the next week. Some foods will make Grandpa happy, others merely content. Some food will make Grandpa disgusted to the point of nausea. Well, let's not do that. Let's not make Grandpa nauseous. Oh, the power went out. Well, be, be careful then. Be safe. Learning material is also scattered throughout the basement. Seek out vocabulary cards intended to help teach English through basic anthropomorphic concept formation. The options highlighted in red are related to navigating around Grandpa's enclosure. The go to grandpa option will let you perform all actions directly related to grandpa. Feeding, teaching, observing, etc. Accessing the study corner will let you go over any documents you picked up as the week go by. It's a good idea to learn about the work of the people who last occupied this space. Accessing the kitchen corner will let you search for food in the old refrigerator and prepare food for Grandpa if need be. The help button will replay this tutorial. The save game button will save your current progress. You can only have one save file at a time. So if you have saved data, you'll be asked if it is okay to override it. The exit game menu will take you back to the main menu. More buttons may or may not appear depending on your development of Grandpa, so watch out for them. One final note, care, take care to explore the basement at your leisure. However, due to the entropic nature of clutter and trash, different wigs may allow you to find things you had not previously discovered. Good luck. All right, let's save this game. Game save. I hate when the power goes out. I just like lift weights and stuff when the power goes out. You have a game suggestion, Julia? What what game? Okay. Um go to the study corner. Uh let's look at the educational posters. What did I find? A set of procedures regarding disposal internment. The researcher will seal off the enclosure bars, ensuring minimal gas leakage during the later fumigating process, and then retrieve the burn barrel and place it near the enclosure. 
allow at least 48 hours of time where the current growth cycle experiences no human-related stimuli. Do not enter the enclosure area nor any part of the basement. Ideally, you will not be on the grounds at all. After 48, 48 hours, two researchers will enter the basement wearing their assigned mirror mask, mirror apron, and powered air purifying respirator. The researcher will use the vent system to fumigate the enclosure area. Wait 30 minutes and use the fan system to ventilate the enclosures. Keep the fans running during steps three and four. Re-enter the enclosure area wearing your assigned mirror mask and apron. So organism may or may not be in complete dormancy. If it is not in full dormancy, be it assured that its capacity to act against you will be greatly diminished. With your assigned power drills, quickly remove any enclosure bars needed to access the organism. Put them aside for later reinstallation. Put the organism in the burn barrel and incinerate the organism thoroughly. Wait for any smoke to be properly cleared by the fan system. Turn off the fan. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, there's a code. The bin is located for safety purposes. The code is... 323245. Hmm. You have gained the conversation topic Biohazard Bin. Consider cut discussing this with Grandpa when he emerges. Oh, Parasocial. I played that one, actually. I streamed that. Uh, that parasocial game made me very, uh, paranoid. I was so paranoid. So dig digging around in the trash to find stuff is a big part of this game, evidently. We're going to play some customs matches because Aaron wanted to and he gave me a, a $50 donation. Uh, we'll try we'll try tomorrow. Vocabulary card, Grandpa. Linguistics linguistics module, Grandpa. Teach Grandpa this word to read the notes of past educators. Alright. Uh, all clean. Okay. We're gonna grow a Grandpa. Ooh, what the hell is that? That better not be what I think it is. What the hell is that? Cashews? That don't look like cashews to me. I don't even want to say what that looks like to me. I'm not even going to say. An account of an acquisition. It was said to pass from one family of steep people to another, but pressed on its ultimate origin, ineligible. Somewhere to the south, coiled in a bowl, covered in incantations, buried upside down by a graveyard. By a graveyard. Buried upside down by a graveyard. A common late antiquity demon trap. The keeper, an elderly man in failing health, was ready to expound on and on about the dangers of the organism when I asked more pointed questions about the history of its acquisition, and I was given hurt responses that had a way of circling back to vague warnings. See, this sounds just like Gremlin. You ever watch that? That movie? I, I, I will do the searching, dystopia. This is just like, it's, it's, it reminds me of that movie. It's like, oh, here's this little monster. Here's a bunch of vague rules and things you're supposed to do and not do. And then don't do them. Then, yeah, bad, bad stuff. 
Don't feed it after midnight. Don't pour water on it. That kind of thing. They're all like, don't let it live past five weeks, and don't do this, and don't do that, and burn it in a burn barrel, and there's a hidden thing, a hidden floor in this thing. It must be a false bottom or something. No, nope, there's nothing in there. Ooh, there is a wood, there is a secret bottom part. I knew it. See? I knew this was going to happen. A note regarding cleanup procedures. To my colleagues, I don't mean to be overly severe in tone, but Dr. Hart's work is very important, and the material we are working with is potentially very dangerous. I will be handing out a copy of this note as a reminder to everyone. I'm not trying to single any particular person out. We all have misconceptions about the nature of this project from time to time. With that out of the way, here are some things to keep in mind. 1. The active growth must be thoroughly terminated via the correct procedures at the very... At the very least, 4 weeks after dormancy is interrupted. See, these are the rules you gotta follow. Like it's a gremlin or something. Um, it doesn't matter what you've done or haven't done regarding tests or procedures or how much the anthropoidic vacuum has been disrupted. We are not ready to go beyond four weeks at this point. A step-by-step -step -step guide to termination has been posted by the enclosure wall. Please, please, please... Do not place the educational posters over this posting. 2. Do not disrupt the anthropomoidic vacuum without Dr. Hart's prior consultation and approval. Where where did all these uh, researchers go? Like where what happened to them? Like this girl and her family moved into this a uh, house with this basement and all uh, this laboratory. What, where, where did they go? In case of any emergency where the vacuum is disrupted, put on your equipment and begin the lockdown procedures. Make an extensive note of when and how the breach occurred. Three, if you find the habitat, if you find the habitat empty, page Dr. Hart immediately. But do not attempt to speak with anyone else. This thing can get very smart. I'm sure you're all aware from the stories we heard on our acquisition trip. The greatest caution should be used when dealing with a potential aggressive mimicry scenario. Please seek me out if you have any more questions. I'll see. We're going down. It's going to mimic Grandpa. Uh, mm, think it sounded good. We're going we, to we're going to destroy the planet or something. This is how the zombie apocalypse happens. Notation regarding sample exoskeletons. Research participants, please take note. Each growth from a cycle does not require a shell, but you may find the sample will often try and seize on something somewhat flexible it can grow into. Along with any desirous yield it may generate, or else it will move from one shell to the next as it outgrows them. In the small amount of time I've spent with it in preparation, I have noticed it tends towards human forms. However, we should keep a tight lid on the anthropomoidic seal in order to be cautious before we begin to experiment with exposing it long-term to anthropoidic stimuli. Dr. Hart. <laughs> Hi, Kelsey. What's up? How you doing? All right. I think that's all. Oh, what's this thing? Some kind of a, it's an imaging machine. All right, I don't know what I don't know what that's for. All right, let's try see if we can feed Grandpa. Go to the. 
Let's see. You know what? Let's save the game. Not the kitchen. It won't let me go to the kitchen. All right, let's go to Grandpa then. Let's observe Grandpa. Examine Grandpa, noting its movements, respiration, and general mood. Grandpa seems sort of sluggish and bored. You get the feeling it may be more content and readily cooperative once you've fed and taught a word or two. Alright. It's time to feed Grandpa, Kelsey. Tutorial. This brief tutorial will go over the basics of feeding Grandpa via induction of your unprotected insula. Grandpa has simulated the production of tooth enamel to mimic a human tooth. It will need to be fed through this in order to properly learn and grow. First, you will need to select an item from the lunchbox. Click on the lunchbox in the bottom right corner. The contents of the lunchbox will be displayed. Select an item from the lunchbox. Doing so will fill your hand with this item. Note that any food can be put back into the lunchbox by clicking on the lunchbox with a full hand. Before Grandpa can be fed, it must judge the food by smell. Hover your hand above Grandpa's olfactory bulbs. If Grandpa is pleased, it will allow you to feed it. Most foods Grandpa will accept. However, getting Grandpa to consume other things requires some culinary deception. When Grandpa is willing to be fed, hover your hand over its mouth and click. Grandpa will then consume the food. Good luck on feeding Grandpa. Alright, we're going to try and feed him. Feed, feed Grandpa. You approach a small window. Ooh. Um. Click on Grandpa. Full of food. Look at that. Look at Grandpa's mouth. We've got cashews. <laughs> Grandpa's indifference to this. We fed Grandpa. This meal appears to have been sufficient. Fed, we fed Grandpa. We don't have anything else in the lunchbox. You step away from the window set in the bars. Grandpa grunts in appreciation and locomote towards its favorite corner. Feeding summary. One digestible food and zero other. Alright, we gotta go to the kitchen and get more food. Let's search the upper fridge. Lettuce. I don't look like any lettuce I've ever seen. All right, lower fridge. A banana. It's a brown banana. Rare food. No, I don't want to trick. I'm not trying to trick Grandpa. I want Grandpa to grow big and strong. Gonna feed Grandpa. Go to Grandpa. Feed, feed Grandpa. Look, he's sitting in that chair. What do you guys think about Grandpa? You approach a small window. See, will he eat a banana? What do you think about banana, Grandpa? He's indifferent. All right, let's see. Let's see what Grandpa thinks about lettuce. Hmm. Let's give him the banana. Banana for Grandpa. The meal appears to have been sufficient.
it, it, it didn't want that. It said maybe if it was a really good meal, it would eat it. Alright, we've, we've fed it enough. Alright, let's... Let's teach Grandpa. A vocabulary card, Grandpa. Yes. Okay. The vocabulary word you picked will appear in the top left corner. In the bottom right corner will be a pentagon. That is divided up into eight sections. A section of the pentagon will be highlighted briefly. A notification sound will play, and soon another section will be highlighted. You will control a small round icon that sits above the pentagon by using your mouse. The ball is constrained to the limits of the pentagon. The goal is to keep your icon over the highlighted area and move it as the area changes sections around the pentagon. When you hold left click above the correct highlighted area, the icon will start to vibrate along with the simulated vocal cords and the current letter of your word will begin to turn red. Keep holding over the highlighted sec section and adjust your icon as it changes place and soon the letter will become fully red. After every letter becomes red, Grandpa will probably pronounce the word to you and it will con be considered learned. Teaching Grandpa these words will accelerate its cognitive development and lead to further breakthroughs in general intelligence. Yes. I'm trying to teach Grandpa. Teaching him. Teaching Gramps. Deep within Grandpa. Strange membrane. Membrane. Membranes funate confidently. I thought it to say Grandpa. He is cute. Grandpa is a cutie, isn't he? He's such a cute little booger. Having completed the lesson, you take a look at the back of the vocabulary module card and notes. They're written by administrators of the past. Grandpa, part of vocabulary and vocalization module E81 family. General pronunciation comments. Um, usual trouble with articulation, voice thin, raspy, possibly underdeveloped larynx. Module comments see below. We have done several sessions of what we are calling familial relation simulation. I and a co-researcher sit in chairs opposite the closure where we are wearing the usual masks and we begin to act out a scene, mostly through improvisation. That might roughly resemble a kitchen table conversation between an immediate family. Okay. Let's just skim through this. Da, 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 da. They keep calling the, the creature whiskers. Uh, my co-researcher William noticed this in a simulation where Whiskers was given a role as a sister and he as a brother. I was a father. Whiskers began responding to certain prompts with unusual specificity as well as a general pattern and timbre of speech that continued with unusual consistency. Hi, Adashi, what's up? Yeah, uh, Two Crow gave out 50 memberships on my channel, and you got one. <laughs> grats, Adashi. Hey, grats on getting 10k subs. I noticed you hit 10k. <laughs> mm. As soon as the simulation ended and we left the enclosure area, William let me know that Whiskers was almost certainly drawing from encoded memories of his late sister. 
mapping out exactly what regions and centers of neural activity are intercepted by the site-type field will take extensive neural imaging that we do not have at this site. Mm. Yeah, this, this creature is kind of uh, psychic, it seems like, and it responds to your thoughts. Hi, Adashi. <laughs> Uh, grats on 10k subs. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so this thing like uh re responds to your your thoughts. This creature. Do I have something else to teach grandpa? I thought I had another card. I thought I had a shell card. Oh, I don't want to do food. I want to do the study thing. I thought I had a card for shell. I remember it saying something like, uh... Alright, I gotta explore the basement. Let's explore. Oh, what's this? A folder full of radiographic images. all that's there. I gotta find another card to teach him a word. Fiberglass insulation. This isn't really food. Grandpa might eat it, however. Is Adashi gonna get a silver play button? <laughs> oh, I saw there. Examine. Something about that painting looks strange. Ooh, what is that? Sound like a doll. A simple paper doll. That looks like uh, one of those uh, paper talismans, like uh, Japanese paper talismans. Yeah, you can do that, um, fish boy, but I, I want to give grandpa good stuff. I don't want to give grandpa bad stuff. We're going to make the best grandpa we can make. You know what I mean? A bulbous growth. Something appears to be growing from the wall. Take a closer look. Ooh. What is this, Adashi? Oh my god. A pulsating sac. The slimy membrane that is its 
skin seems to contain something. It might be able to be opened with a blade. I don't have a blade. I need a blade. It looked gross. Whatever it was. Corroded battery. This isn't really food. Grandpa might eat it, however. I'm not feeding Grandpa batteries. Get that. I ain't doing that to Grandpa. Hello! Vocabulary card, hello. What I've been looking for... That's what I was looking for. Crash. The darkness in the shadowy corner unnerves you. You cannot explore here without some form of light. The hairy thing that was here before is gone. See what's in the cabinet. Uh, hi, Unstoppable. What's up? How you doing? Ooh, what is that? Those mushrooms? Blueberries. It looks edible. Grandpa might like this. Gotta find stuff for Grandpa. Look, would you, if you were Grandpa, would you want people feeding you batteries? Corroded batteries? We're gonna make, I'm gonna make Grandpa nice and healthy. We're not giving him junk food. An account of an acquisition. Before we began, we had us all cover our faces completely. An earthenware pot was ineligible. And on the inside, as we stole brief glances at it, we could see the interior was inlaid with mirrors. The intelligible gave it small pieces of dough. Boiled food, chicken feed, ineligible, keeping it content. Keeper gestured towards a small bag where the food composted and told us to be careful not to feed it any meat. I asked if the rotting food was enough to sustain it, how it might get nutrients from any of this. The keeper regarded me seriously and said it did not matter what it was fed, the act of feeding itself was what mattered. The act of feeding flesh is another act, however. He then gave me another series of grave warnings regarding not keeping any animal derived foods near where I might be keeping it. So, just like the gremlins, it's like, okay, uh, don't, don't let it live past five weeks, don't feed it meat, don't do this, don't do that. You give me all these rules. And things are gonna go bad. I'm doing pretty good, Unstoppable. I'm having a great stream. I, get, I had someone give me a $50 super chat. I had someone give out 50 gift memberships. Two of my viewers hit a year. Two Crow and South both hit, both hit one year. They've both been members for one year. Which means I've been a, part, a YouTube partner for a year. Hard to believe it's been a whole year. This thing has keys. I don't have any keys though. Well, if I find keys, this is where I'm coming. All right, we gotta feed. We gotta teach Grandpa more words. Teach Grandpa. Uh, we're gonna teach Grandpa to say hello.
Uh, it's been a long time. You've been what? Since before I came to YouTube. We're going to teach it to say hello. Say hello to fish boy, grandpa. This one's harder than the other one. Deep within Grandpa, strange memories. But they confident. Hello. Having completed the lesson, you take a look back at look at the back of the vocabulary module card and the notes there written by administrators of the past. You gotta use the little Pentagon thing to teach grandpa. Um, we are already encountering some difficulty as Whiskered subjectivity is so much determined by a diverse and dynamic array of influences. It attempts to mimic the thoughts and desires it passively intercepts, and these imitations go on to structure the basis of its identity. Only later in Whiskers' growth cycle does it begin to form an identity or identities that are coherent and capable of resembling a sane, rational human being when engaged in conversation. One must imagine how hard it would be to converse with someone who is not yet oriented in one particular way towards who or how they, will, they are because they might have 20 different honest answers to those questions, all of them mixed and muddled together. Because of this, we have started with the basics of conversations, greetings, partings, Identifying one another, forming questions, etc., etc. It is fortunate Whiskers' current growth, number 19, I believe, has developed a mostly accurate human mouth simulation. Hello was a bit of a challenge in the previous growth, as it had failed to develop an adequate organ to act as a human tongue. You step away from the bars. Alright, we did those. Now let's talk to, let's try to talk to Grandpa. Uh, I think this game is an hour and a half, is my understanding. Welcome back, Aaron. Uh, if you want, we'll, we can, uh, do some customs, uh, tomorrow, Aaron. Attempt to communicate. Grandpa accedes to your request. It approaches the bars and begins to unknit its skin. The inner grandpa, though still not fully formed, is revealed. It may be fruitful to speak with it if it can respond. Ugh. That's gross. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Uh, well, I, I spent a lot of time talking at the beginning, so. Ask about Grandpa's shell. <laughs> With a great deal of effort, Grandpa gurgles fragmented thoughts through its ill-formed lips. Skin. My body. All human skin around me. Give more. Grow more. To fit. Ask about wish. With a great deal of effort, he talks. Mother. Will. Father. New lives out of the air. 
the dark spiny filaments that make up the majority of Grandpa's body begin to oscillate rapidly. Air behind your eyes. I can taste it. Ask about the biohazard bin. With a great deal of effort, Grandpa gurgles fragmented. However, it fails to produce more than a wet and frustrated sputtering noise. Well, that's all I had to talk about. Alright, we're done talking for today. Grandpa silently ascends back into its shell. Let's observe Grandpa again. Let's let's try let's try if he'll eat the blueberries. Anything it wanted to eat. All right. All right. I don't want to feed him bad stuff, so. Save the game. And I think that's all I got to do this week. So we'll end this week. Yes. Food acquired. Cashews, lettuce, ban banana, fiberglass insulation, battery, and blueberries. Weekly summary. Went to car. Knowledge you acquired has given you a new topic. All right, language. No, I'm not going to feed Grandpa batteries. I'm not doing that. How would you like it if I fed you batteries? Mrs. Richards approached me the other day in order to remark on Adrian's development. She noted how much more at ease she appeared when called upon in class or when asked to participate in group exercises. I told her I had seen this change happening as well and that as much as I would like to take credit for it, I can only guess dimly at what might be reshaping her attitude. Mrs. Richardson posited that it was perhaps Adrian's family moving into their grandfather's property that caused the change. It apparently is out in the country, in a wooded area full of wide open spaces and far from the bustle and noise of the city. The grandfather, Dr. Jacob Hart, had jointly purchased the land with the university he was employed with and began constructing what he was intending to be a satellite campus for a burgeoning psychological anthropology program he had a hand in establishing. Only one building ever ended up being constructed after Dr. Hart died in a car accident when driving back from the property one day. Early, at almost at the exact same time, a grad student who was assisting Dr. Hart on some sort of project at the property vanished without a trace. Oh, that's probably that person in, earlier there saying, um, you can't help him. He can't be helped or whatever. That's probably the student that vanished. The property sat in disuse for years as it was tied up in legal battles between Dr. Hart's next to skin, the university, the vanished grad student family, and the other students Dr. Hart was working with. Eventually, the case was settled out of court. Only recently did the property fall into the possession of Adrian's mother. Wow, everybody wanted the property. 
Obviously, I was not going to relay this whole tragic story to Adrian, who, for all I know, believes her grandpa to still be living in the basement of his home. Besides, I thought she might already know all of this. Perhaps the elaborate story she was constructing was her own way of escaping the morbid details of a life, or perhaps lives, cut short by the cruel force of fate and the cynical adults who squabbled in the aftermath. Uh, at the same mic, I, uh, you know, sometimes I mess with the, uh, equalizer, though. Do I sound different to you, Nicole? I mean, it could just be, uh, I mess with the equalizer settings since the last time you dropped in. I determined perhaps the storytelling she was and continues to engage in should not be encouraged by me. At least not in the way I went about it before, where I made active inquiries into her strange fantasy of a semi-sentient ball of skin. When I saw Adrian, I did not bring up her grandpa or ask questions about his growth. Adrian could not stop talking about it, however. I had no choice but to weather her bizarre and enthusiastic effusions about her new best friend. Uh, does it sound better or worse, Nicole? <laughs> I like the face she makes when she's sitting there. Adrian, maybe we can talk about something else. I'm not sure I'm following you exactly. He's gotten so big. He has so many whiskers that come out, and I can see them moving around when I think about him. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm so happy Grandpa is back. He's so much cooler than Mom and Dad. Once again, for what it's worth, I have put down the story she told me as best I could. Adrian once again told me about growing her grandpa. Uh, that's so gross. Still there. Uh, we gotta, we gotta clean up, find all the hidden goodies. Is that a cinnamon roll? Oh, that sounds good. Cinnamon roll would sound really good right now. Somebody get me a cinnamon roll. Oh, it's a kiwi. Grandpa might like a kiwi. What do you think? The hairy thing is still gone. I think that hairy thing may have been what was left of that student that disappeared. Yeah, I bet you he'll like the kiwi. Nothing here. I wanted something. How does this trash end up back in here? Uh, not not really, Nicole. I just kind of mess with the equalizer and try to make it sound good. <laughs> Are, does it sound worse to you, Nicole? Some days I sit around and just play with it. Try to make it better. There's a card. Life. You can teach Grandpa the word life. I think it's been a while since Nicole dropped in. But it's good to see you again, Nicole. Potato. 
Potato, it looks edible. Grandpa might like this. Nothing new from the painting. You don't know? Kiwi, I, I think Kiwis are alright. It's not like... I'm not the I'm not gonna go to the store to buy kiwis, but if someone offered me one, I would eat it. Yet another pulsating sat grows in this corner of the basement. Gross. I don't have a knife to cut these things. Gross, 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 gross. It's another card. Teaching Gramps. Indecision. Okay. This is feeding your grandpa. It's basically a little kid's making a homunculi is unknowingly is uh what I've come to, th to believe is happening search the fridge got a strawberry we got a pear Feeding Grandpa bad stuff. Alright, let's teach Grandpa. Let's teach him first. I'm gonna teach Grandpa words. Teach him the word life. knows how to say life. Mm, at week three of growth, number 24, Whiskers appeared to recall some information from a previous growth cycle. We, we cannot be sure that this was really the case. For all we know, what we interpreted as recollecting this information was really a drawing semantic content from one of our recollection, recollections of it. <laughs> I'm having trouble with that word. Recollections. One of our recollections of it and redeploying it without uh, rationality or contextualization. They like big words in this game. For the sake of our safety and for the sake of scientific inquiry, we are attempting to draw out from Whiskers whether it somehow retains knowledge from previous cycles and its mor morphalactic nucleus. We do not think it was possible the nucleus, though complex and incredible in its regenerative abilities, was capable of this and that the nerve network that grew from it made up the base of Whiskers' quote-unquote mind. And so we are now attempting to ask Whiskers, as best we can, if it has ever died or what it might, be, might remember if it did. Alright, let's teach Grandpa another word. Indecision. Uh, so I won't be playing DVD today, Aaron, but I will play DVD tomorrow or, or whatever day you want to. Uh, today I already had this game, this game planned for tonight's stream, but let me know, uh, when you, when you want to play DVD after today, like tomorrow or whatever day you want to play and we'll play DVD. Let me know when you when you want to. Okay, we'll play DVD tomorrow and we'll do customs.
Speak, Grandpa, speak. Use them words. He's gonna say it. Ooh, that he said that one pretty good. He's getting he's getting good. Thank you so much. Thank thank you so much, Aaron. I pre I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. All right. Uh, are you heading out? Well, have a good rest of your night, Aaron. And I'll catch you tomorrow. We are introducing the latest growth of Whiskers to more subtle social cues and testing its ability to judge mental states of participants in conversation. The semantic content that flows to Whiskers via its sci field is still becoming muddled and slipped without distinction into conversation, although our intention of instilling in it a solid theory of mind will perhaps make it begin to understand that we do not know what it knows or know what we are without our control sending. You, you too, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to have some fun playing customs, Aaron. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate it. The semantic content that flows to Whiskers via its side field is still becoming muddled and slipped without distinction into conversation, although our intention of instilling it in it a solid... Oh, I already read that. <laughs> One would think a theory of mind seems to develop as part of its maturation process. In order to hunt sapient beings, it must be able to deceive them. In order to deceive, it must be able to make certain metacognitive judgments. For example, if their deception appears to be working, or how one ought to be deceived. We may never see it develop a theory of mind anytime soon, as Dr. Hart has disallowed a cycle of whiskers growth to live into the beginnings of maturity. We're creating a mimic monster. <laughs> it's good to see you again, Jonathan. Uh, custom, that's when, uh, the killer and the survivors are all grouped up, basically. It's like, so, I could be the killer, and all of you could be the survivors, and then we can play against each other, or vice versa. One of you can be the killer, and I could be one of the survivors with some of the other viewers. Uh, basically, both sides are just all people that know each other. Oh, do you think it's going to be good, Jonathan? Mm -mm -mm. The Fantastic Four movie? Is it going to have Doctor Doom in it? I'm going to feed Grandpa. Feed Grampy. Okay, Nicole, you're more than welcome to join. Let's see what he thinks about a strawberry. <laughs> Grandpa wasn't too thrilled about the strawberry. I have the kiwi. What do you think about this, Gramps? Indifferent? All right, but well, you can eat it. Eat that. Yeah, it's basically DVD with friends. Yep. <laughs> the Cappy? The Cappy multiverse? Which what phase what phase are we up to? I need that. <laughs> are you into the Cappy verse? I am not making grandpa I'm not feeding batteries to grandpa. No! I want Grandpa to grow big and strong. You, you step away from the window. 
Grandpa grunts in appreciation and lo locomotes towards the favorite corner. Let's save. Let's observe, Grandpa. He seems content and ready to cooperate. Let's communicate with Grampy. Oh, that's gross. Let's ask about language. Grandpa still struggles somewhat to speak due to its underdeveloped tongue, mouth, and jaw. However, it managed to rasp out an answer. Look, he's got, look, he's talking. Look at him talk. Grandpa is old. My lives were easier before I made myself to speak, and before you made clothes to wear and rules to obey. Your grandpa remembered. I have learned much in many lives and deaths. Keep speaking with me. I love talking with you and learning from you, and it helped your grandpa so much. Soon I will be everything you would like me to be. See? I'm growing a nice monster. It's gonna be a nice monster. I'm making a nice monster here. My monster is not gonna rampage through the village and kill everybody, okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's save again. Feed Grandpa batteries. Crazy. Mm -hmm. He's going to be a nice grandpa. The time I have to spend compiling an evaluation on Adrian is almost up, and I still can't say what to make of her changes in mood. It is of course the case that children of Adrian's age are nowhere near finished, learning and growing. I may have to simply be happy that Adrian was able to improve her attitude. However, something in the odd and occasionally grotesque story she continues to bring up to me still strikes me as meaningful. How has your week been, Adrian? Grandpa is almost ready. He's almost finished. Well, sort of. Ah. He's almost as big as his shell now. He has a face, and he can talk pretty well, and almost has legs. I see. As before, I put down the story she told me as best I could. Once again, Adrian told me about growing her grandpa. Still nothing there, right? Damn I still don't have a knife to do something about these gross, gross things. I need to find a knife. What is that? A bar of soap. This isn't really food. Papa might eat it, however. I am not feeding. Don't even. Don't even ask. I'm not feeding Grandpa soap. Don't. Don't even. Don't even ask. Not happening. There's nothing here. I want a knife. Give me a knife. You feed your grandpa a bar of soap? No. I don't want him to turn into a Frankenstein grandpa. 
I want him to be the friendly, friendly monster. Meaning. Okay. Not meaning. He's going to be Grandpa the friendly monster. Not Grandpa the I'm pissed off because you fed me batteries and soap monster. That'd probably make him kill everybody. He'd probably go on a rampage. Rip everybody's head off. It'll be on the news. Still can't get in there. There's just bul these bulbous growths are all over. These bulbous growths are breading or something. Grandpa's almost ready to clean himself. He's got arms. He's about to have legs. Ooh, what the hell is that? A mushroom? It's a mushroom! It looks edible. Grandpa might like that. Thimble is the new word. When do I get the knife? When do I get keys for this? When do I get keys for that thing? That the bulb, bulbous things. Search your fridge. A jackfruit. What the hell's a jackfruit? Uh, hi, smudged. Yeah, one of my viewers gave out 50 uh, memberships. Yeah. Two, two Crow gave out 50 memberships. Two Crow's so nice. An apple. No. Nope. We're not doing that to Grandpa. This imaging thing. Mm hmm. Let's look at the notes. Intriguing results with regard to the mimic hypothesis. A participant entered a sealed chamber adjacent to Whiskers. Growth cycle number 21, which had been freed from the anthropopoietic vacuum, constructed quite economically from plaster and broken mirrors. The first propagation's original earthenware vacuum was shattered during the move-in. Between the two, there was a semi of paint glass that allowed observation both ways. The human participant was asked to think of someone in the popular consciousness, fictional or no, and cogitate on their image, personality, face, if possible, voice if possible, etc. Our participant chose Jesus of Nazareth, and with weekly repeated exposure to the participant's imaging, propagation number 21 began forming, what resembled an anthropoid Nazarene in the fold of its spine. Uh, let's just get him through this. Um, um, Dr. Hart has always contended the desirous yield or the anthropoid reproduction whisker creates when in contact with human beings has always been based on the conception and relation to the person through someone else. With this framework, this desirous yield is not actually a replica of a person, or if it is, it is only a replica of the fiction of a person generated in the mind of another. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. This radiograph was taken right before the destruction of the growth cycle, while Whiskers was rendered unconscious via fumigation. It seems like with every successive propagation, the stem cells in the organism work a little faster. But I'm not paranoid. Technically deathless, yes, but we're burning up whatever knowledge it's gained when it, we incinerate it. 
I don't believe in magic just yet. Oh, you gotta head out? Okay, no problem. Oh, uh, that's okay, Two Crow. All right, have a good ni night. Thank you again so much for those 50 gift memberships. And thanks for being a member for a whole year. Whole year. Yeah, thank you so much. Now have a good night, Two Crow. This is the... I got a couple of these. So it can mimic animals too, is basically what this is seeing. It can it can mimic animals. When Whiskers is removed from dormancy and replicates a rabbit's morphology, it is not seen from the rabbit's eyes nor smelling from the rabbit's nose, but pretending that it does and doing a very good job of it. <laughs> uh, all, you know what, Two Crow, you're the best. All my viewers, you're all awesome. You're all a bunch of wonderful people. Thank you, thank you for so much for ha watching and hanging out with me and playing games with us. Mm. Ooh, this doesn't sound good. This radiograph is taken at or around growth cycle number four. The strange thing about it was that the subject of the image was found nowhere near the enclosure. It's almost like a piece of whiskers fell off and buried into the corner. I feel like we've learned a lot since then, but at the time, I remembered speaking about the morphology being weird, not really even resembling any extant zoomorphic structure besides maybe a cuttlefish. Then I happened to open the thing up. Inside were all these little dead amoeba-like things. But they were all sort of looked like they had faces. Faces that were just barely there. After I took the radiograph, I gathered it up and went to go throw it in the biohazard bin. As I walked by the bars of the enclosure, I could hear whiskers suddenly going wild, flopping around and grunting excitedly. Could it have smelled the cuttlefish thing? Would it eat its own? Would it eat its own production? I guess it's technically flesh. This is beyond the scope of the project, but it could be that without the stimulus of an active brain, or more specifically, a healthy and active brain capable of face recognition, and theory of mind, Whiskers be began to pull whatever it can from the limited data available to it. And again, this is not our focus at this time, but I left a note for Dr. Hart just in case he wanted to take a look. Uh, thank you, Julia. All right, we've gone through all these. This this creature seems like the thing. If you watched uh, John Car Carpenter's The Thing and how the thing mimics people, that's kind of what this thing sounds like. Let's teach, teach Grandpa. Meaning. I'm going to teach him the word meaning. Talk to us, Grandpa. notes.
We further delve into abstraction with whiskers, partially or perhaps for the, for, for the most part, with the purpose of determining the origin of its recollections that precede its death. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hart has begun to theorize that in the process of death, the structure of whiskers is compressed back into the morphalactic nucleus, and then later, upon reestablishing the nerve netting that is laced through its spines, is slowly reassembled and redeployed as needed. I do not think this is the case, for I can plainly see that for growth cycles in which whiskers is not receiving our, our pronunciation and vocabulary lessons, that its capacity general for comprehending its environment is greatly diminished, and in the simulated conversations we carry out, whiskers struggles greatly or else does not participate. In any case, we will press on with our lessons and heed Dr. Hart's caution regarding terminating the growth cycle before whiskers' allotted growth time passes, or if it appears to be coming just a little too competent at appearing human. Alright. Teach him another word. Look at Grampy. Grandpa's got a lot of hair. Thimble. That was quick. Thimble. There appears to be nothing written here, or if there was, it was thoroughly erased. Okay. Go to the kitchen. I, I think I did. I already grab the food. You know, an apple. That all I got? No, I got a couple other things. Strawberry. He gramps. How about a mushroom? All right, get that. Jackfruit, what do you think? Like that. And give him another one? How about an apple? gonna get my knife I want to cut those things open there's all those bulbous things are spreading all over that place oh I forgot to talk to him oh well I don't think I had any new work things to talk about anyways Probably that doesn't matter. Ooh, the dreaded week five, Julia. Who could that be? Come in. Ah, ah. Adrian, good to see you. Aren't you a little early? No matter. I suppose I have some time now. How you been? How is your grandpa doing? That, that's why I wanted to talk to you. Something's happened. Oh, what happened? Nothing bad, I hope. N nothing bad, just different, I think. M maybe even good. Well, I'll tell you about it. Well, last night, something woke me up. There was this noise at first. It 
was like it came from the walls. It's in the goddamn walls, Julia. It's in the goddamn walls. Where's my clip? <laughs> He's in the walls. He's in the goddamn walls. In the goddamn walls, Julia. <laughs> it was like it came from the walls. I could hear it from my bedroom, but there was something else. Something calling. I could hear it just barely. I I was afraid somehow Grandpa hurt himself. I had to go find out. I went downstairs in a vent. The place where I first found Grandpa or what... I grew him with. It was open. Do you remember how I told you about the vent in the ceiling? Behind the bars? I was thinking he had climbed up into it. He had gotten so big he could have done that. Maybe he had gotten trapped somehow in the vent. I had to go see. Oh, she's going to go in there. Oh, what if she dies and Grandpa replaces the kid? That not, might not even be the kid talking to the teacher. That might not even be the kid. That could be the mimic. Ready to kill the teacher. You think about that, Julia? I got inside. I heard the calling again. More clearly this time. Grandpa was definitely in the vent. Somewhere. I could feel him. Hearing my thoughts, I got that weird feeling of sense in the air. I had to go forward. As I moved in closer, the vent had stuff in it. The kind of slimy, hairy stuff Grandpa would leave around a lot. He was definitely close. Something was there at the end. But, but it wasn't Grandpa. It looked maybe like he had made it, though. Like he had made it. It was slumped at the corner. And it had a weird mouth, and it had its lungs on the outside and drew in just enough air to call out. And it just stopped. Stopped breathing. And then something was hanging over me. Then I woke up in my bed. Hi, Antonine. Long, long time no see. Welcome back. Oh yeah, you're you're R. I forgot that you you are your R B. That's right. Then I woke up in my bed. In your bed, Adrian. It sounds like it was quite a dreadful dream. Are you all right? By the way, your face is twitching like you're about to have a violent sneeze. I'm fine. It's just Grandpa. You see, it took me a little, little while to figure it out, but later when I was brushing my teeth, I saw one of Grandpa's whiskers poking just out of the space under my eye. And I started to remember how in the vent he hid inside of me. It was so fast I could barely remember, but soon I started to feel him sliding around in my head. Behind my forehead and behind my eyes and nose. It doesn't hurt at all. It's just ticklish. I'm glad I could be with him. Oh, I can feel him now. I think he wants to meet you. Part of him is moving down my arm. Oh. I'm starting to get worried, Adrian. You really should not be twitching like this. I should walk you to the nurse's office. Come on, let's go. You should really meet him. 
I have told him so much, told you so much about him. Here. What are you doing, Adrian? You're starting to look very ill. Please, just wait. Just stay still. He's gathering, waiting at my fingertips. Why do you look like that? You don't have to be afraid. Look. <laughs> I knew it! Grandpa got the teeth. There are two endings in growing my grandpa. I got... I don't know. I, what did it say? It went so fast. I didn't see what it said. I get, did I get the bad? Was that the bad ending? Teacher died. I'm guessing the other ending would probably be if I fed Grandpa bad stuff. I'm guessing. To skip credit, hold down right mouse button. And that was the end. She killed the. Well, she killed. Grandpa killed. The teacher got grandpa fied, I guess, or attacked by grandpa. Hmm. Well, I kind of saw that coming. Mm hmm Although, I thought that, uh, the girl would be completely replaced. But instead, it was more like the creature became part of her. Maybe, maybe she would completely get replaced if I did the batteries and stuff. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe he was nice to her. Maybe if I fed her the batteries and stuff, uh, he would have just killed her and completely replaced her. Right? I don't know. I'll have to find out what the other ending is. All right. Well, that's the end of tonight's stream. Tonight's stream was uh, pretty amazing, actually. We got a $50 donation from uh, Super Chat from Aaron, which is a record for me on YouTube. And um, then Two Crow gave out 50 gift memberships. And Two Crow and South both hit one year. They've been both been members for one year, which means I've been streaming on YouTube for a whole year now. Isn't that crazy? A whole I've been a YouTube partner for a whole year. Well, I've been streaming longer than that. You know, it took me, what, 10 months? It took me like 10 months to become a YouTube partner. So, almost two years on YouTube. Year as a partner. All right, so since uh, Aaron was wanting me to do customs in Dead by Daylight, and since he gave me that big donation, I am going to do that for him. I'm gonna do customs for Aaron since he wants to do that. Uh, the plan is tomorrow to do it tomorrow. So, if you want to see some Dead by Daylight custom matches, drop in tomorrow. <laughs> I did too, Julia. Thanks. Well, have a good rest of your night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Okay, yeah, we we can try again and give him give grandpa different stuff We can do that so, uh, one of these nights Julia <laughs> Okay, <laughs> bye bye